Isn't that glorious? I've never seen a stand that looks like this before. Cool. Look at this Bristol 400. Well, welcome to Old Classic Car. It's the beginning of a new year, so Happy New Year everyone. I think it's about the 8th of January, something like that. This is the first show that we've actually done a video at. We did go to a New Year's Day meet a few days ago. But um, today we're down at Bista Heritage for the Bista Scramble. Now, we came to Bista back in 2018 for an event called Flywheel. But this is the first time we've been down to the Bista Scramble. So uh, I've read many good things about this meeting and the car park's filling up already. It's advanced ticket only, if you're thinking of coming along in the near future. But yeah, this is our first time at Bista Scramble, so it's going to be really interesting just to see what turns up. I think we're going to be a mix, this is the public car park, but I think it'll be a mix of interesting old cars and newer sporting cars and that kind of thing. So obviously we'll prioritise the interesting old cars. And there are several parking up over here in the forward parking area. We'll just we're on one of the old taxiways here at RAF Bista. Cracking little mini we just saw driving in now. E types. V12 Series 3. Porsche. TVR. The Cerbera. The Speed 6, I would imagine. Lovely old Jowett Javelin. We saw this one driving in a minute ago. Wow, Bradford's finest. Not quite. Hey, not quite. So is it a taxi? Do you use it at all for taxiing purposes? Every year it goes to Goodwood. You do good oh you do Goodwood with it. Revival is part of the classic taxi fleet. Oh right, yeah, 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 yeah. And it's been doing that for fifteen years. <laughs> wow. Well, I've been all over it as well. Hmm. <laughs> That's fantastic. Good morning. Good morning. You alright? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, very well. Bister Heritage, um, basically is a hub, a centre for classic car and vintage car businesses across the country. Um, this used to be, uh, I mean it's first, it was established back in about 1916 or 17, the First World War era, um, and it was also used as an airbase in the Second World War, and in about 1939, 1940 or thereabouts, my grandfather was actually based here when he flew in Blenheims. So we do have a family connection to Bista and the wonderful old wartime buildings that are still here and have been repurposed for all manner of classic car related businesses, events and so on. So I'm really looking forward to having another look around and seeing what's changed in the four years or so since we last came here. Like I say, this is a fairly new event and this is our first time to it. So uh, yeah, it's nice to have a wander around with the old 124 series Mercedes estate. Astra. If you saw the video we did of uh, visiting France recently, you saw we spotted a very early Citroen Visa. We had a good mooch around that, so it's nice to see another one. There should be a real variety of cars here today, so we're looking forward to having a good look. Look at that Plymouth. BMW 2002. Another E-Type. Morning. Hello. Over here, next to the big, big hangar, there's a great old Austin van. Looks in very much as found condition. And there's something burbly. These are great, these old things, the old vans, they just don't survive in huge numbers, so this one needs a bit of TLC, but yeah, it still survives, that's the main thing. Interesting late 1930s Austin tour here. Is this a 10 or a 12? Something like that. So it got the uh, dicky seat, yep. 
dicky seat in the back. So if you need to carry someone you don't like very much, they can go out here. But they have to sit in all weathers. There are the steps there and there to clamber inside the back. So sometimes I call them mother-in-law seats, which is a little harsh. It's got a Winkworth bell on the front. I wonder what the story is with this. There's so many airfields dotted around the country which were used during the Second World War. Many of them are you know, under threat of housing developments and so on. So it's great that this place has been repurposed in this way. Grr. Look at this here. I'm assuming this is some sort of bomb-proof shelter. Maybe it had like a searchlight on the top here. Well, I love mooching around these old airfields. Wow, nice old Fiat over there. Can I zoom in? It's like a little Fiat, isn't it? Or Seat or something. Yeah, I was just say that, so I was thinking. We're going to start in the forward parking area of the public car park. So if you turn up in something suitably old, you can park here. We've got a glorious V8 Aston Martin there. A Porsche, is that a 993? I think. If it is, that'll be the last of the air cool 911s. We've got a 924. A Fiat 500, a Bath. Oof, lovely wheels. Look at those wheels on there. Hopefully it'll stay dry today. A bit of cloud around, a slight breeze, but... It is the beginning of uh, January, so we can't be too fussy. Nine four four turbo. Our TVRs. I was putting a video together recently of TVRs over the years, and I'm not very good at identifying these. So what year is that? On an L. I don't know. Three thousand M maybe. A TR7 convertible, a drophead, Saab 900, a classic 900 before GM got their grip, their paws into Saab. And we saw how that ended up. But well, this is a proper classic Saab 900, a five door. Dad used to have a turbo one of these, one of the very first from 1979. This isn't a turbo. That's a 900i, so it's two litre fuel injected. We've got a 205 rally here. Scooby-Doo. We passed this XJ40 on the M40 coming down here appropriately. This is a Daimler version. It sits very low. It's got XJR, XJR6 wheels on it. Now, what engine's lurking under the bonnet of this XJ? Could be a 6 or it could be a V12. Now here we've got a Porsche 912. So where's the uh, 911? There's a flat 6, this is a flat 4. Quite a rare car and some lovely badges here. These 912s and early 911s are just such lovely designs. Nice and simple, no fussy ornamentation on them. They're just beautiful. The Fuchs, I think they call those wheels. F-U-C-H-S. Yeah, that's a beauty. Next to the 912, we've got this split window camper. Is it a camper? I'm not quite sure. Let's have a look. Beloved bus, 1958, 11 window VW split screen school bus. Mostly original paint with minor blending where needed and imported from Canada. There you go. If you want to buy it. Wow. <laughs> That's great. Just imagine going to school every day in all weathers in Canada. This lovely little VW. I like the roof rack. Apologies if there's a bit of wind noise on the microphone. There is a bit of a breeze and I don't think I've ever been to an airfield where there isn't a breeze blowing across. Now here, this is an Alvis NUV 939. A drop head coupe Alvis in fact. Very smart indeed. A bit of everything here, modern sports cars, classics, We've got another classic Saab 900 here. This is one of the facelifted cars with the slopier fronts. The earlier ones had a much squarer front end. It's a three door. The other one was a five door hatch, this is a three door hatch. When the Saab 99 brought out this shape, introduced this shape of car, it was called the Combi Coupe. 
but that was dropped when the 900 came along or a Morgan Rolls Royce what's that a two-tone shadow one chrome bumpers Bentley Oof. that's rather smart isn't it I feel like I should be doffing my cap well, that's it well, that's the way to arrive, isn't it? Beautiful old car. The kiddie seat in the front there, so uh, someone's being brought up properly. The Tudor Webasto type roof as well. Cracking weather. Okay. 911 SL Mercedes, one of the earlier SL Mercedes with hard top. Let me think, is that the 129 series and this the 107, I think. C Red, so that'd be about 1985 or thereabouts. For the Morgan, I think there'll be a good contingency of Morgans here. The 911 Targa. 928. Car of the year, 1978, although this is a later one. When they first came out, these are quite a radical looking car. Big front engine V8. This is the S4, as you can see there. I think the idea was that this would take over from the 911, but it never happened. They sold alongside each other, and this was very much more of a GT, a mile muncher, whereas the 911 was a bit more raw. SMGB GT, crumb bumper, mini light style wheels, and again, the Webasto type roof. Seem to be very popular here today, the Webasto roofs. Interesting old cars are continuing to turn up, so I think we'll revisit this car park a little bit later. There's an XK150 just parking up, fixed their coupe. Beautiful Alfa Romeo here, Le Mans 1975. So this is one of the 105 series cars, I'm not quite sure what engine's in this one. I'm guessing it's a 1750. A beautiful car, what a cracker that is. Another 911, somewhat modified looking, judging by those rear arches and those huge wheels on the back. It's very cool indeed. This is that Fiat we saw from a distance, a Fiat 850. Oof. Interesting fact, this shares its carburetor with the Renault 4CV we bought recently at home. I'll admit only mine hasn't got the original Solex carb, but in researching it, um, just to see what it should have, it shares its carburetor with these apparently. I'm trying to avoid the music, so we've got a Mazda 323 here. Another Morgan, early Herald, this is a 1250. You can tell it's a 1250 with the 1147 engine because it, it's got the two-ton paint job and the 1250 had the full-length folding roof again. We, don't know, we do seem to be going on about folding roofs today, but this was a standard fitment on the 1250 and that differentiated it from the standard 1200 Herald. Lovely P5B saloon. Obviously you could get the coupe as well with a lower roof line, but I prefer the saloons. And the fact that they're half the price of a coupe there's another big selling point in my opinion. I ran a whitish and off-white one of these a few years back. Beautiful old car. Look at this XJ Coupe, left-hand drive. That music in the background can be a bit of a problem for us YouTubers because um, you get into copyright areas when you have music playing in the background of a video. So I'll try and avoid it. I've got a Lotus Cortina Mark I. Another VW Splitty. MGB Roadster, Lotus Elan Plus 2, showing its pop-up lamps. Very nice. The 105 Series Alpha, 911 Carrera. Big S-Class, the one W126 S-Class. These were available with the uh, six-cylinder or the V8, if I remember correctly. Dad had a five-litre V8, one of those. Got a TR7 drop head. An E36 BM Coupe. Rally prepared 205 GTI. Now, that's a very swish Mercedes. I do like these big old square saloons. Echoes of the bad guys in some of the early Bond films. The 
these are just beautifully made cars. Very sharp looking car, no silly fussy styling, just, you know, just restrained and nice. XJS. That's one of the facelifted cars with a different rear window arrangement. Another E30, this is a four door E30 saloon. MGB Roadster. Modern Bentley, well, I say modern, it's 2004. Still quite classy, those I think. Moggy van. A little Morris, was it 600 weight or 800 weight van? There's my youthful assistant. And look at this wonderful old Lancia. Is that 2000, is it? Super box, it's such a high roof, isn't it? Oh, get a great view out there, not like modern stuff, is it, where you can't see anything out the back? This would be a doddle to park and manoeuvre. That's really, that's really nice. I do like unusual cars. It is nice, that is. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> that's lovely. Over here we've got a trio of little M MGs. We've got a midget there on a G. The Another one on an M. That's a round arch midget, the white one. And why do we call it round arch midget? Because it's got round or well, semicircular rear arches. They did that for a while, but they did revert back to the squared off arches with later cars. And this is another square arch on an R plate. So I'm guessing that probably starts out as a rubber bumper. Ooh, look at this, Alvis. Gaggle of old Land Rovers here. I'm guessing this is a Series 1 club. Well, that's a beauty, I love this flat back, it's like a tray back almost, isn't it? I wonder if it's coming from Australia or somewhere like that. Uh, it says Australia. Does it? Oh, it does. <laughs> I promise I didn't look at this first. Lots of modern supercars gathered around here. We won't spend too long around here, but I just want to go and have a look at that Renault Alpine because I do like those, the Alpine A610. Oof, that's quite a late one. Great registration, I assume that's its proper number. A610 Alp. That's a rare sight, I don't think I've seen one of those before. Yeah, this seems to be the modern supercar gathering point in the shadow of some of the lovely old hangars here at the former RAF Bista. Another one behind me here. Like I say, 80 odd years ago, my granddad was flying in Blenheims out of here, so it's a, it's a place that does mean something to us. As well as being a great venue for a classic and vintage car gathering. No doggies. Many, many Aston Martins. Open top and fixed head. A glorious Porsche. This is one of these sort of resto mod 911s. You said to me that you're the one with the red <laughs> Appears to be some driving demonstrations taking part in this wonderful old hangar. I think, like I said before, it's just great that these old buildings have found a new purpose because so much of it has been swept away and been replaced by anonymous housing developments. And Morris Minor convertible being put through its paces. Everywhere you look, you're reminded of the aviation history here at the former RAF airbase at Bicester down in sunny Oxfordshire. 
I suspect my youthful assistant will be featuring some of these more modern cars on his car traction channel, or one word, C-A-R traction. Anyway, let's go and... I know, but it's, it's more your... Slightly more up your street than mine. So we're going to mooch down here now and have a look at some of the businesses, many of which will have opened their doors up today. And we'll go and have a look, see what's here. I'm guessing back in the war, these were the old MT sheds, I think. I think that's what these would have been used for. So they may have had like fire, firefighting equipment and then they've had a clear run straight over to the runway, which is over there. So I'm pretty sure that's what these buildings would have been used for. If you've not been to Bista Heritage, it's well worth having a think about. Hopefully this video will just provide a bit of an overview as to what's here and what typically turns up for these scramble meetings, including glorious old Lancia Delta Integrale. It's one of these places where everywhere you look you just see interesting things. Over here we've got a glorious Mark II Jaguar in the Acuria Cost Metallic Blue, compete with added bonnet louvers. I'm guessing this will be a 3.8 I would have thought. Yep. Very, very nice, very classy car indeed. It's got the cutaway rear arches, the Coombs style rear arches. John Coombs was a prolific Jaguar tuner back in the 1960s and one of the mods that was quite common was to put these cutaway rear uh, spats on the back. Many cars have been retrofitted with them including this wonderful 3.8 Jaguar. Slightly early Jaguar or probably the SS as they were known before the war, they changed the name after the war. So this is the SS Jaguar at the time, this is a one and a half, they did a two and a half litre as well I think. But pre-war, Jaguar was the model name and SS was the, uh, the maker. But obviously after the war, SS had certain connotations which no company really wanted to be associated with. So uh, Jaguar was adopted as the company name, not just a model. But what a beautifully stylish car that is. These and the some of the big pre-war MGs, the SAs and the VAs and some Talbot. But I just think they're gorgeous, these saloons. Often way more expensive to restore than a comparable tour, but I think that's just such a stylish car. Over here we've got a 1922 Aston Martin. This belongs to a pal of mine. He only lives around the corner from us, so this was at the New Year's Day meeting last weekend. I wasn't expecting to see it here, but this is a super early car, one of the very first Aston Martins ever, 1922 TT2. And here's the history of it, so feel free to pause the video and have a look through this because it's got a really interesting history this. It started out as a single seat racer. I'll have a quick look. Just carry on walking down this avenue. You just don't know what you're going to spot, who you're going to spot and so on. Yeah. I've not looked at the absolutely gorgeous one. <laughs> nice E28 5 Series BMW there. Series 1 Land Rover. Cars as far as the eye can see. What's that? That's fantastic old Woody just over there in the distance. I'll make sure we have a look at that before we finish up. God, lotuses. The Lotus Elite, this one here. I've seen this one before somewhere. This was at the Pageant of Power at Chumley years yeah. ago. Shooting brake. Oh, I think we've seen this at Alton Park as well. Someone had this built. It's like a shoot, yeah, shooting brake version of an Elan Plus 2. Cool. I forget the details, but if you look up the registration online, you will find information about it. The Lotus Estral. Got an XL there. I remember picking up the remains of one of those. A mate of mine decided to buy an XL project. The engine was all in pieces, and we went down with his Larder Riva saloon and a huge trailer. And we collected the remains up of this XL from a place in South Wales somewhere. And we had a very, very slow journey back up north with it. 
think 38 miles an hour is the maximum speed we could do before the whole lot started weaving around so that was all quite unfortunate but that's my abiding memory of an XL he did put it back on the road but I don't think he's got it anymore it's the same lad who's rebuilding the XK120 fixed head coupe that I introduced in a video to the channel a little while ago if you've got a project on the go and you're worried whether you'll ever actually see it completed or not just go and have a look at this XK120 and anything else looks like a child's play compared to this XK that my mates picked up so it's definitely worth a look if you haven't seen that video yet pretty much any type of preserved or enthusiast followed cars you'll find here everything from that Bentley over there to this Peugeot 309 is that a Goodwood limited edition? I'm not quite sure looks like one yeah, Goodwood GTI, 309 GTI. Mark II Golf. Many things over here, including more old aircraft, which is always good news. So we've got modern sporty cars, middle-aged sporty cars. Lovely old 911s like this. Past another air raid shelter, which is what we have here, and close by to this much used hangar. A 356 Speedster. I'm guessing, going off the registration, which is late 1960s, this is a recreation. It may be one of the Chesil built cars, but very, you know, real nice homage to the original 356 Speedsters of the 1950s. Very swish indeed. Mrs. OCC is a big fan of these. There's Chevy at the back here. Fifty Shades of Green Racing. Something modern, a McLaren, a bit more like it with a V12. A Ferrari 400i. Beauty that is. Probably the most affordable way into Ferrari V12 ownership. Probably just as expensive to keep running as one of the sportive versions like a Daytona and so on, but these are very swish. I think most of them are automatics, but there were a limited number of manuals, I think. This is an auto. I can forgive it that just for the V12 soundtrack. Wonderful car. Nice to see a Mark 1 MX-5 here, we're a big fan of Mark 1 MX-5s back at OCC HQ. Ours is 1995, we nearly came down in it, but in the end we just borrowed Mrs OCC's car. I've got a V Reg, so what's that, about 1979 or thereabouts, this is one of the W123 series saloons. Various engine sizes were available, I think the smallest were four pots, but most of them were six cylinder, I think. What's this one badged up as that, that should tell us. 2.30 Now let's go back down here because I spotted a very nice looking P6 hiding away under the trees We've got an E46 M3 convertible Really no matter what age of car you're interested in You're bound to find something here The V8 3500S S signifies manual gearbox most of them are autos, the three and a half litre P6s. It's a nice colour as well, like a very light greeny sort of colour. Really good usable car. Just what a great setting. What I like about this is it's not too formal. It's not all the cars just aren't parked regimented rows and lined upon line of car. They're just sort of parked all over the place. And it just gives it a really nice informal air. So we've got a right-hand drive E-type here. Uh, oh, right, yes. Oh, is it? So this is a Series 2. I don't think the Series 2's originally had the fared in the glass covers over the headlamps. But going off those big chunky indicators, it's a Series 2 and the age of it, G-Reg. Someone's left the lights on. This is a 4.2, the earlier E-type started out as 3.8, then they switched to the 4.2, still with a straight 6 XK engine. A lovely car. E-Type fixed head coupe or roadster, which would you go for if you were in the enviable position of being able to afford one of these? I like the idea of a roadster on a nice day, but I think for 90% of the days and the weather we have here in the UK, 
if I could fit in, which I think I probably could, it would be a fixed head I think I'd go for. And I think Harley would do the same. Let me go and ask the Oracle, which one would he have? Okay, young man, so fixed head or roadster? I uh, think I know the answer. It's pretty predictable, fixed head. Fixed head, yeah. why? Why? Um, it's just a lot sleeker. Yeah. I, 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 just, I just really like yeah, the fixed beautiful, head. Beautiful, isn't it? Yeah. I, don't, I mean, I wouldn't turn away a roadster. <laughs> no, no, I wouldn't, but... Well, I just... Yeah, it's just like, if the... Say the Triumph Spitfire had the six on the edge out of the GT6, I'd still have the GT6 mm. because I just like fast back. And they don't drip in. That is very true. They don't drip in. <laughs> but, yeah. but like MGB Roadster, MGB GT, oh. definitely GT. Fair enough then. I right, well there you go. Fixed head cars. Yeah, there you go, ladies and gentlemen. The Oracle has spoken. Fixed head all the way. And it's hard to argue with that. <laughs> go Alpha GTV, beauty. Caterham. The 346, last of the good looking BM3 series, I suspect. So, what's this then? Big mighty 1974 F100. Oh, standard. A standard Vanguard estate. Good lordy. I wonder if that's the one I had. I had one of these years ago. It's the Vignali, yeah, because the Phase 3 was just updated a little bit, taller windscreen, slightly different front end. It's based on this Phase 3 it's Vanguard. Yeah, proper old it's number really plates. Is it? Well, we like these, don't we? Proper, proper number plate. And these horrible, cheap, pressed metal things with the wrong font or wrong typeface on them. But this looks like a really original car. Many of these, in this colour actually, we used as RAF staff cars. It's got an RAF on the back. Yeah, I mean, this could be the one we had actually, I don't know. It could be. I can't remember the registration number. But what I do remember about it is you've got this split tailgate, so obviously the bottom bit goes down, top goes up, and there is a huge toolkit built in to the rear lower tailgate. I assume it's still there. Yeah. And lovely blue mills, look at that. It looks like there's a sort of flat that would fold back. Yeah, that is fantastic. Oftentimes at this time of year there are just so few shows and events to go to, so that's an, an added joy of having this wonderful event taking place so early in the new year. We've got a series 2 or 2A, 1964 Landy. Something fruity over there. Modern Aldi, eh? A lovely bit of ropage there. So a quick peek in the back. We've got all the essentials. Coffee, nibbles, bob on. Here we've got a Volvo 480. I'm going off the registration, it's maybe one of the turbo cars. A 480 ES. Bit of a hark back. You know, there you go, turbo badge. It's an auto turbo. This is an automatic turbo. But yeah. Bit of a bonkers looking car. Mighty Audi Avant. <laughs> Lovely six cylinder Triumph Estate, this is a 2000, they obviously had the two and a half as well. And again, like that standard Vanguard we saw a few moments ago, what a handy bit of kit this is. The ultimate practical classic. This is a Mark II, as the badge says on the back, but the back end styling, the rear styling, they never updated it over the Mark I, even though the interiors were changed on the Mark II compared to the earlier car and the front end obviously, which looked very, very different. The back end stayed exactly the same. In fact, we appear to be in the classic estates and shooting brake corner. Great little mini here. What's this? What is that? I'm guessing V8 Ford. What a gorgeous car that is. Wow. Isn't that glorious? I've got a feeling I've read an article about EXY3 before somewhere. But what a great car that is. V8, flathead, the side valve V8. That engine saw use in all manner of cars. Those gorgeous teardrop headlamps. The engine also made it into the Fords and 7V lorries. Hot rodders back in the 1950s and so, through, you know, so on. They all use the big flathead V8s, pump, very pump. tunable engine. But woodies are very, very rare. Oh, it's, 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 uh, it's just wonderful. 
Got a jazzy looking Ferrari, quite swish, but we're not going to look too close at that because over here we've got a wonderful Bentley. Oh, good heavens. So that's one of the Derby Bentleys that's been built up as a Woody. Oh, just look at the curve on the back. <laughs> Imagine going to an auto jumble in that. Filling the back up with many, many goodies. Go shopping, park that up in Tesco's car park. Absolutely wonderful. Oh, what does it say in the window? I missed that. Let's have a quick look because we like to look at information sheets. 1937 Bentley, four and a quarter litre shooting brake by Vincent of Reading. Formerly owned by Mulberry founder Roger Sewell. There we go. Someone's found the horn. Beautiful Lucas lamps. Next to that, oof, good lord. Let's have a quick peek inside here. A magnificent vintage Rolls Royce. Not too shiny either, not all polished up. Proper old RAC. Royal Automobile Club Association badge there, perched on the top of the radiator. We saw this at the revival last year. Did we? Yeah, it, was, it went round the track and it was at like the Sterling Moss Parade. What this was? Yeah. Oh, right. It was like a minute behind the wheels. <laughs> well, that is <laughs> a pretty epic, aren't they? Look at that. These gorgeous old door handles. Just look at the wear and the pattern on that. That is just wonderful. Obviously the worm took a bit of a liking to it at one point, but I guess that's all been treated now. That's one of the big risks as well as rot and just generally falling to pieces. That Ford is magnificent. Which one would you have then out of all these woodies? What would you go for? Yeah. You go for the Ford. I think, I mean this is wonderful, as is the Bentley there. But that Ford was something else. No, this isn't too clean though, is it? No, this, this is nice and original. God, if this car could talk, good heavens. What a wonderful dashboard. Yeah, it's like the dash out of an old aircraft, isn't it? And many, many switches, dials, gauges. There's an old dealer supplier plaque over there. I don't think I can quite see it, but we'll try. Let's see if the old zoom will work. It's a proper oily ragger. I think I probably would go for the Ford, to be honest, simply because if anything went wrong with it, there's so many spare parts around, and you can buy them. There's still loads of people messing around with V8 Fords in this country. Yeah. Oh, that teardrop, the teardrop front. But yeah, in terms of running the car regularly, I think it would be the Ford because there are just loads of people still messing with these V8 Fords here in the UK and in America. Let me know in the comments which you'd take home. Oh, I've just got to have another look at the shape of this. Regulars to the channel will know I do have a bit of a penchant for 20s, 30s and 40s American cars. Maybe cars like this go somewhere in explaining why that is. Because that would just roll along beautifully I think. Nice big torquey, understressed engine. That would be very, very nice to drive, I bet. Continuing with the uh, sort of woody thing, kind of. We've got a Ford Taurus with a bit of fake wood down the side there. What do we have here? Fantastic Chevrolet, that's 1965 registered. Monster V8 lurking in there, though. That doesn't look very original. Heavens above bit out of my comfort zone here, so it's a Chevy Nova. Could easily be tempted with one of these. Or, oh wow, <laughs> good lord, what is that? Harley mentioned something about a Skoda being over here. Yeah, a Skoda, good grief. Echoes of Phase 1 Vanguard there, but... 
What an incredible car that is. Foreign registered, I'm guessing it's been driven over from somewhere. I wonder if it's been driven over from Czechoslovakia. Wow. Look at the mascot. It's like a, I'm not sure if it's glass. What an incredible car that is. Let's carry on walking around here. We've got some Peugeot 205 and a Vitesse, a Triumph Vitesse estate, 1965. Now, I don't think the factory ever produced these, but various people have built their own up because all the rear body just on bolts, you've got a separate chassis, unusually for this age of car. This one's registered 1965, obviously based on the Herald. But with the, uh, I'm guessing the two litre straight six in this one, the Vitesse six that came before had the 1600cc engine. I'm guessing this is a two litre car. And all this body, like I say, the chassis, there's a separate chassis under there. So all the front that hinges up and unbolts, the bulkhead unbolts, and the back end unbolts. So you could buy this, I mean, you wouldn't want to, but you could buy, the, it is a Vitesse six, so this is a 1600. But yeah, you could if you wanted to unbolt that entire rear end and put the rear tub of a convertible on there you might have to do a bit of bracing here and there um, and i know the door locks and catches on the convertible because you've got a lot more flex in the body they had to alter those and improve them slightly but basically the fundamentals are you could take that rear body off and you could put a saloon body on it a torah convertible and so on so it's a bit like a big meccano set really the heralds of Vitesses, and indeed spitfires and gt6s this morgan over here looks like it's seen a bit of bit of an exciting life wow. it's a 2019 so it's not very old vehicle. right it's a prototype, a prototype. Oh, right. interesting but look at this glorious humber here las 855 a super snipe estate oh, dear i thought we were finished with all these classic uh, estate cars but i was wrong what a glorious car that is it's not you, you don't often see too many good ones of these these suffered in the 60s and 70s, the front arches would rot away and usually they've got about a ton of filler in the front arches and the rear arches. So good ones are not all that common now. Look at that lift up rear window as well. That is wonderful. Can't really see the interior, but trust me, it's all wood and leather. It's even got a steel sliding sunroof. Ah, yes. <laughs> and just imagine holiday making in that back in the 1950s, 1960s, that kind of era. Pile all your goodies, your bucket and spades and picnic sets and things in the back and off you go. And that would roll along very nicely, I bet. Another slice of Americana here. Look at these groovy roof lights. A Vista Cruiser. <laughs> Alongside that. It's a Fiat. Mm, it is. I thought it might have been an auto Well. Oh. Is that the Jardiniera, the estate, is it? Yeah, no. Fiat 500 estate. It was fold back, yeah, it was fold back. Well. Oh, mm, a full length fabric roof. And a boot, and a boot. Well, it's probably the size of every other fabric. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Alright, let's mooch along here. Lots of modern Porsches. There's a huge turnout of Porsches here, so if you're like your uh, car's rear engine, this is a place to be. A series 1 Landy looks like it partakes in a little bit of off road, judging by the huge grippy tyres on there. Let's have another look at the building. Another very big Porsche, but over here, much more modest, another E28 5 Series BMW. We ran a number of these a few years ago. So which one is this? M5, the daddy. Very upright design these were. 
very handsome understated cars when beamers bmws weren't all shouty and in your face they actually looked quite classy still honda nsx plenty of peugeot 205s here we've got a roland garros limited edition a lancia fulvia Got an MG over here. Oh, I can just feel a few spots of rain. Marvellous. MGB GT V8. And the shadow. This is a shadow too with the big chunky bumpers. A midget. It is quite early, isn't it? Because it doesn't have the wind-up window. So this is... Yeah. So this has the clip inside screens as opposed to the windy up windows. This is quite early. It's got the six digit registration, isn't it? So it's mm. quite early. Oof. Yet more goodness here at Bista Heritage. 911 Carrera. They're not horrific. It's not, they're probably the same as there. And, um, Lotus Cortina 911 Carrera a couple of Ferraris but over here this is what I want to have a look at a Peugeot 504 Safari Rally 1975 Let's see if we can get around and have another look <laughs> Limited use only. I can relate to that. This is what I like about this event. You've got obscure 70s rally cars rubbing shoulders with fairly modern Ferraris, old 911s, Lotus Cortina, and a bright red Porsche. Let's keep going, there's a few spits and spots of rain, so we'll have a proper look round. We've got a TR6 with his roof down, we need to put that up fairly soon, I think. And over here, a rally prepared MGA fixed head coupe. Anyone who knows their old Austins and BMC products will recognise that roof vent. Those roof vents were sourced from the Austin A35 van. They also went on to be used in the minivans, but I think they started out on the A30 and the A35 vans in the 1950s. And they were used on period works rally cars back in the day to offer a little bit of extra ventilation because it could get quite hot and steamy in here. Same with the big Heelys, the Heely 3000s. They used to get very warm, but of course they had a big side exiting exhaust coming along here. And it used to get very, very hot in the cabin indeed. So any extra cooling, such as via this little flap would have been very much welcomed by the rally crews tasked with racing these cars on an MGB Roadster with hardtop, no roof vent in this one it's on an R plate so I'm guessing that's a rubber bumper car that's been retrofied got a TR4A 1966 independent rear suspension, left hand drive so presumably an import groovy little alpha here wow Lifted up really high for rallying in pretty torrid conditions over the thorn. Rally round Africa 2018. I'm just hiding away over here. We appear to have a Bugatti. That's a Type 35A, I think. A is the supercharged one. And you've got this little vent on the, rather the air intake on the side of the bonnet for the supercharger. The Type 35, forgive me if I'm wrong, but I think the normal Type 35, the unsupercharged car, doesn't have that air intake on the side of the bonnet, I think. Uh, some more pre-war cars. This is good news. Big old Austin 6. That's some sort of... I'm not quite sure what model that is. 
but very nice indeed. I think this is one of the classic car dealers based in this building here, the Motor Shed. That name rings a bell. So what do we have here then? A standard. It is a standard. I thought it was a standard from the shape of the from the shape of the radiator, but I've never seen a standard that looks like this before, so I was a bit hesitant to say. And here an Armstrong Sidley, that's a rare old girl. Wow, we've got the Sphinx radiator mascot there. That is a car and a half. What an imposing machine that is. KV5824. Look at the, even the door handles are unique to this car. It's a lovely old vintage Renault there, the coal scuttle bonnet. What's unusual about those is the fact that the radiator is behind the engine, hence the air vents on the side there. Harley's found a lovely MG single seater. I know a big old truck that would look nice in the back of. We appear to have a spot of rain now. Well, anyway, let's plough on regardless. Citroen CX. Try not to get too much rain on the lens. An XJS behind that. Everyone's diving for cover. Well, it's still raining, but we'll carry on because it could start raining even heavier later, so uh, we'll make the most of this. What do we have here? Bay Window VW. And a, a pretty tasty looking Aston. DB24. Mmm, classy. Tonneau cover raised now on this lovely Alvis, I think it's a 1250. Seems to be a, a bit of a hive of Porsches over here. It's gone uh, a bit muddy underfoot. Many, many Porsches. Really good. The 911 S here, showing off its engine. Hello. Nice Alfa in there. Yeah, it's a very tasty Alfa Romeo here in one of the dealer's buildings. Let's go and have a look. Oof, look at that. Wow. When we're looking at this, the advert for this yesterday. I bet it is. Well, we'll carry on battling, braving the elements. So this is where Singer normally... No Fraser and Ash BMW hiding away over here next to the eatery, which is very popular. Everyone's hiding out in the rain, which I can well understand. Yeah. Again, a very useful tonneau cover on a day like this, but it is January, early January, so we can't expect miracles with the weather. That's what? A 4CV. Oh. oh, yeah. Oh, I think you're right. Now, what do we have here? Oh, 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 be still my beating heart. What is that? So what's that a, it's not a Model A, or is it? A, no, it's not a Model A, it's the wrong, is it a Model B, BB? 
I think it's a BB that, or maybe, yeah. But wow. <laughs> we just get away from the uh, rattly diesel engine in this funny little thing. We've got a glorious early 1930s Ford truck. The Wrigley Monkey Brewery. Obviously their promotional vehicle. What a bobby dazzler that is too. I mean for the time of year, oh, look at this, what's this, an Armstrong Sidley Sapphire. The later cars were the Star Sapphires with a slightly shorter grille, but when the grille goes above the front of the bonnet, that's the Sapphire. Done up as a period rally car by the look of it. And the grey Fergie, oof. Ooh, Austin Seddon. Where was I? Oh yes, walking towards this Alvis. It's also have a TC21. Lovely original number plates, we approve of those. 924, Jaguar S-Type. So you can imagine a slightly reworked, updated version of the Mark II. Slightly longer back end, different front. But more importantly, the independent rear suspension with inboard disc brakes at the back. Let's carry on over here. MX-5 Mark II. Little 3 Series and E21. Slammed. <laughs> wow, look at this Armstrong Sidley. Wow, so that's a Whitley. Armstrong Sidley Whitley, complete with blackout equipment uh, headlight masks. PEH 8740H is a Staffordshire registration, if I remember right, around Stafford, somewhere around there. <laughs> wow. Everywhere I look, I just keep seeing cars I've never seen before anywhere else. And for, like I said before, for the time of year, there's just a huge turnout of really interesting old cars here. So I'm so glad we made the effort to come down. Much lowered VW Beetle here. The rain is easing off a little bit. The wind's getting up, but the rain is starting to ease up a bit. It's meant to blow through, so fingers crossed it will do. But we'll plough on regardless. We're plucky, hardy souls here at Old Classic Car and Car Traction, respectively. Mark 1 Sirocco. Lurking over here, we've got a fairly early XK120 Roadster. I'm guessing it could be one of the alley bodied cars, possibly. I know the alley bodied cars had separate side lights on tops of the front wings. Whereas the later steel bodied cars tended to have the side lights integral and leaded on. The moulding was sort of leaded on to the tops of the front wings. So I'm guessing this is an early example. It may be, it may be, it could be, it could be. Obviously, there are lots and lots of interesting modern cars here as well, but as the old classic car channel it tends to be geared more towards the older cars that's why i'm prioritizing them in this video an airstream caravan over there we have a fixed head xk here so which one's this i'm not too good at identifying the 120s and the 140s on the side this is an xk 120 fixed head like i said before check out the video that i did when my mate had his uh, XK120 restoration project shipped over and uh, revealed as we opened the container and saw it for the very first time a hell of a project but he's really cracking on with it last time I spoke to him he was, he'd done most of the metal work on it so uh, yeah I'm looking forward to seeing that when he's finished it these are gorgeous cars Harley will just be waxing lyrical now about how much he prefers fixed heads to roadsters I can't say I blame him Delta Integrale, I do like that. There's bound to be some cars we miss scooting around here. I don't want to lose Harley, he's behind me. Got a BMW Z3, we used to run a 2.8 litre version, one of these. Really nice car. MX-5s we've already touched on. Frog Eye Sprite, the Austin Healey Sprite Mark 1. And a very unusual MGB, this looks like a prototype. We've sold our MGB development car that went just a couple of weeks ago. Sad to see it go, but it did enable us to buy something else. Yeah, yeah it's a bit of a concept styling mule. Aston behind it. Yeah. 
plough on, and not an Austin 7, but a Morris Minor, very similar to our 1932 car. Mine's a two-seater, this is a four-seat Tourer. Not quite sure of the year, and the grills, the, right, the radiator rather, changed every year or two. Um, ours is a 32, different radiator to that, and I also had a 34 Saloon. But either way, it's pre-Morris 8 Series 1, up to I think, about 1934 I think they changed over. A little bit of more vintage goodness around here. Good grief, what's that? <laughs> the Alexander Special, I'm guessing. We've got a big old Ford engine nestled away under there. We've got a transverse front leaf spring, which is very Ford. Mm. <laughs> what is this? What is that? Rolls Royce. <laughs> I wonder what the plans are for this. Well, that's interesting. I thought Rolls Royce was always hyphenated, but clearly on some of their vintage castings they didn't bother. So if you look on the gauges. That's a monster of a car. So what will this is? Is this going to be built up into something? Now here we've got the recreation of Japig. This is an old, like a hill climb special little race car, home built race car. It was a one off. And this is a recreation that's been bubbling away for many years. It's a recreation of it. It is. Yeah. There's the original car there at Brooklyn's. The build of this is has been documented on Facebook. There was a Facebook group, a page for this, yeah. Back to the rolls. Is that like a massive saloon that's been put down? It probably was a big old saloon or even a hearse, something like that. Lots of hearses got rebodied. So it could have been a big saloon or a hearse, probably one of those two. Got the gear change on the right of the driver here. It's huge. <laughs> Switch gear is so reminiscent of like 30s, 1940s aircraft, that kind of thing. Yeah. Austin 7's heading back. Here we've got an Alvis, wonderful car. The TD21s were a car I did have a look at a couple of examples when we were thinking of what to replace the various restoration projects that we sold with. And the coupe, the fixed head versions of these, are still relatively, relatively affordable compared to comparable cars from the likes of Jaguar and such like. The open top cars are getting serious money now, but these fixed head coupes are much, much cheaper and arguably probably nicer looking. Keep heading down this way now, MR2 Mark 1. Bugatti, you reckon? Yeah, it could be, couldn't it? Here we've got one of the Pagoda SLs, although this hasn't got the Pagoda roof on it at the moment, bolted on, but lovely SL. Whereas this one does have the Pagoda roof on it, you can see the shape of the roof, the way it sort of dips, that's how they got the Pagoda name. Morgan, there's that 2 plus 2. And we'll just zip along over here quickly because I can see a couple of interesting cars. We have a Crayford Cortina Mark II with tonneau cover, very wise. Alongside that, Triumph Vitesse 2 litre, 1967.
fairly random. To me. <laughs> Elan plus two, another one. A lot more Elan plus twos here today than the normal Elans. And here, harking back to the RAF past of this site, the former airfield, is an RAF spec David Brown tractor or aircraft tug. These would have been used to tow Lancasters, Halifaxes, that kind of thing. If I remember correctly, I think it was from Bicester that I think one of the first Halifax flights took place. That's a beauty, that is. We've got an Austin here, I think this is a big seven. A bit like a Ruby to look at at the front, but the grill's slightly smaller. And it's a four-door car, whereas the Rubies were only ever two-door. So that was the last of the pre-war Austin 7s. And the Toyota, is this a Tercel? I think. But I'm a little bit out of my comfort zone with that one. Another 356 Speedster Rep. GT40, 1965. <laughs> it's a real gaggle of little businesses, all specialising in something to do with vintage and classic cars. Got a Riley here. Beautiful little Riley four seats, four door Tourer. There are businesses here as well as looking back at sort of the heritage side of motoring, there are businesses here looking at the cutting edge side of electric cars and so on, but obviously today we're prioritising the old metal. And here, a wonderful old Triumph. That's a rare old bird. The Riley alongside that. Mark 1 Golf and Alvis, another 12.50, yep, 12.50. The original hair radiator mascot. Oof, very sporty looking Riley here. Huge drum brakes on the front of this, so probably set up with a hill climbing in mind, I would have thought. I've seen this one here before. Is that the Sprite? Really original looking car, proper patina survivor car, that one. Oh, good lord. A Renault 4 CV. Anyone who watched a recent video on the channel will know we've just bought one of these. Wow, well, ours is a 53 stroke 54. I'm not too well up on the precise details of these yet, but I know the later ones had a sort of a planar style wheel, very similar to the Renault Dauphine, or the same as the Renault Dauphine. So this is an earlier as opposed to a later 4 CV. But wow, what a Bobby Dazzler that is. Some very nice Marshall lamps on the front as well. <laughs> yep, left hand drive as Harley's just pointed out. But ours has got wind up windows. I don't know if that's a UK market thing or the difference between a base model and a deluxe. I'm not quite sure what the differences are. I know some of them have got these vents on the scuttle. I don't think, I can't remember now, but I don't think ours has got the scuttle vent. A Mini 1275 next to it. Such variety here, and the Ferrari Testarossa over here. Very big, really wide machine. 944, a bit more compact, a bit easier to park. Maserati. McLaren of some description, but I don't know what that is. There's that BMW 2002 that we saw just after we got here and it's got an Automobile Club de l'Ouest badge on the front. They're the organisers of the Le Mans 24 hour, but this is their association badge. Another O2 alongside it, slightly earlier with a tin front. The 2CV6, about 1987 or thereabouts. Something Noisy, has just started up. Wonder what that is. <laughs> now we're approaching the main entrance here at Bista Heritage, so there won't be too much further to go in this direction. Let's have a quick look at this Cortina GXL, I think.
It's the E, the executive. 2000 E. A spiritual successor to the, uh, the Mark II Cortina, the 1600 E. Here, primrose yellow MGB GT. Here in building number 90, one of the many preserved buildings here at Bicester. I can hear something nice. Oof. Lovely selection of pre-war British cars. Riley, Riley, Riley RM, so that's post-war of course. And what's that MG in the far corner? Is that a VA? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Artwork on display in here. <laughs> Series 2 E type. That's a 2 plus 2. So it's a fixed head, slightly higher roof line, longer doors, rear seats. It's a little bit more practical compared to the standard fixed head coupe. But the original is probably slightly more balanced design. But you take your pick, practicality or looks. Nine eleven Targa. Nestled away over here, we've got a, a compact collection of wonderful old motorbikes. A Bruff Superior SS one hundred. Wow! I don't think motorcycles get much better than that. Alongside the Bruff, we've got a BSA Trials Bike, a Triumph, it's a Triumph 500cc Trophy, 1951, the Sunbeam, 1927 Sunbeam, 347cc, and a 1915 Sunbeam, 3.5 horsepower. Wow, I can well understand why people collect old motorcycles. Quick look over here, the main road is just there, so we can't go too much further that way. We've got an XK140, this is a drophead coupe. A 66E type. An XK120. An XK140 fixed head. Another early 911 or a 912, I'm not quite sure which. 912, second one of those we've seen today. And a C-type, presumably a C-type rep. That'll do. C type or D type, which would you have? Oh, don't make me choose between C or C type or D type. Either we're talking replica or real one. Either. Um, I'd possibly say C type. Yeah. Because it's the iconic. I I, I wouldn't refuse D type. As I've <laughs> said before, obviously. But I reckon a C type would be a bit more practical because you can fit two people in it. Probably. A bit better. I'm trying to avoid the music, but we've got a lovely Austin here. Let's have a quick look at this. The sun's breaking through now. The sunshine shines on the righteous. 835 hot. Series 3 V12 E type Roadster. So this is Morgan's own building. Thank <laughs> you. 
It's always worth bringing some sturdy boots when you come here. Series 3 Land Rover, the Trans Bedfordshire Expedition. Oof. Citroen DS 1972 or early 73. Sterling Moss's name on the side. Yeah. Of that. Graham Hill and Sterling Moss. The name's on the uh, front wing of this Mark II. That's quite a late one. It's a 3.4. Technically it's not a Mark II, this is the 340, so the slender front bumpers, F registration, so quite a late example. So these are slightly, slightly cheapened versions, some people do actually prefer the slender front bumpers, a bit like an S-Type. And they had, I think they usually had ambler as opposed to leather trim. Head over here, try not to get knocked over by a 911. Great big old the old S classes. I remember James Hunt had one of these. Maybe it was this one. That's oh, a 280 SE. Yeah. Yeah, pretty bomb proof they are. In the Lost in Seven Box Saloon. Another Merc. We've got a coupe version of the W123 here. And the Porsche 944. And I spy over there on Amazon Estate. <laughs> it's going to have a shifty at that. I think the uh, the Bista Scramble is held, I think, three times a year, something like that. I know they're planning on having a regular monthly meeting, but the full-on scrambles, I think, are three times a year. The next one is probably in April, if memory serves. But just have a look at their website if you want to come down. Like I said before, at the very beginning, it's pre-booking only. You have to get your tickets in advance of turning up. You can't turn up and pay on the gate. That's really just to keep the numbers manageable, because otherwise this place would be even more rammed with people than it is today. And trust me, it's pretty busy as it is. Okay, here we are again, just parked higgledy piggledy any old ways, no order here. Fantastic, uh, another 340 or 240. Seven series, one of the E38 BMW seven series. Got an Audi, an Audi 80 or 90, something like that, the Z4. Very nice shade of blue, this MGB Roadster. Trusty old Volvo 240 here. Another preserved old hangar. Speedwell Sprite or Sebring Sprite, in fact. So, rebodied Austin Healy Sprite. Porsche looks like it means business. There's another E38 7 Series and the DeLorean, handy for a spot of time travel. Not much use if you want to travel more than 88 miles an hour though. An RS 1600i. Much rarer car than the XR3i that came along later. Is that Elvis? <laughs> Interesting little Mitsubishi Colt. <laughs> There's the Mitsubishi Lancer. Yes, I don't think the hubcaps are original. That's a rare survivor, that is. Was that 1986 or 87? Somewhere around there. Got 
into the old uh, catering van here, but let's have a quick look down here, see if we can sneak around the back, oh, have a proper look. It's quite busy on the other side, it's a, it's a Morris J2 or the Austin 152 version. So which one is it? Try not to trip over. The Morris, so that's the Morris J2. Yeah, that's great that is. Makes a change from all the Citroen H vans and things you often see. Of the reminder of the wartime past for the Bista site. One of the earlier 928s, we saw the S4 before, which is a later evolution. And an Audi Quattro, an Avant Quattro, 200 Quattro, wow, four wheel drive. Aerodynamics was all the rage in the 1980s. The Audi made a big play of their wind cheating designs, the Audi 100 and the 200. Very tasty little Porsche. The Citroen BX Estate. I used to have one of those as a, well not as a company car, but I used to have use of it during the day sometimes, a diesel BX Estate. Very comfy, much nicer to drive than the Sierra that they also had as a company car. 205, Citroen AX, a Renault 5. I'm hiding away behind the Renault 5. We've got one of those V6 Renault Clios. 2003, so that's 20 years old now. That is, doesn't time fly? Now we've got a Bristol over here, a 72 or 1973 Bristol. Harley's already on the case with this one. If it's anything like the Bristol's that weren't before, the spare wheel is hidden. I think this hatch drop, this sort of drops down, it's like a hatch, and I think the spare wheel lives in there. At least it did on some of the earlier models. Proper quality carriage, that one. Let's type on the move. Matching pair of Daimler uh, SP250s, the darts as they were unofficially known, fiberglass bodied, two and a half litre V8 engine, Edward Turner designed engine. Also responsible for the four and a half litre V8 engine that went into the Majestic Major. Yeah. Yeah, yeah it is a bit alpine like, isn't it? But these sound lovely. I like the D cast into the uh, rear. Is it the. the 250 version that was in the, you know, the Daimler Mark II Jag. Yes, it's okay. the same engine. Yeah. Oh, right. Yeah. Promising formula, having that in a sports car. <laughs> yes. Another full via here. You have to go and have a look at the E-Type. Do I? Okay. Let's go and have a look at this Series 2 Jaguar E-Type on Wolf Race Alley Wheels. It makes a change from spoked wheels. <laughs> That's really great, that a real 70s mod. <laughs> so Mark II alongside, 1965. So what engine have we got here? 2.4, 3.4? Yep, it's a 3.4. Many people say the 3.4 is the one to have. Almost as powerful as a 3.8, but a bit revier. I think we've got an upholstery shop in here. See if we can have a quick nosy in through the door. Let's go around here. Like uh, the trim shop. What do you think of? Uh and yet another glorious vintage Alvis. 
Mark 1 Escort and the Quattro. Lots of nice doggies here as well. Hello. What do we have here? A Stutz. Good heavens. A vintage American car here. Of course, until not long ago, we were in the same group of owners with a 24 Dodge, but that, that's gone now. And we followed this one in on the way in here to Bista. I think it's a 4x4 version of the Fiat Panda. Yeah. A very appropriate pan registration on this one. Left-hand drive. Really good car. These are getting quite sought after now. Ooh, Bentley. How did I miss that? Matching pair of hooters on the front there. Bosch. Bosch. Good heavens. So I suppose Bentley is German owned now. So there you go. <coughs> Classic oil. <laughs> Amen to that. <laughs> Renault 5 rally car. This is a Turbo 1 or Turbo 2. I can't remember which, but the engine in the back. Most of them are Turbo 2s. Another building of much goodness. Let's go and have a look in here. Oof, good heavens above. Wow. <laughs> Racing Bentleys. <laughs> That's incredible, isn't it? <laughs> wow. If heaven is a place on earth, I think we've probably found it. Isn't that just a stunning, stunning car? Yeah, you hear one or two people saying it's not much interest in pre-war cars anymore, but I think I beg to differ. That's always appreciated. Never's tried to get hold of you twelve times. <laughs> So many amazing little businesses all located on this one site and that's how it works so well. Yes, that would look very nice hung up on the wall or above the mantelpiece. But yeah, Bista. So many little businesses all dotted around, all joined together so you could literally have your engine rebuilt in one building then just walk around the corner and have your trim done, your paint done and so on. And that's why this place works so well and the setting couldn't be more appropriate. Wow. The cover's off the Bugatti now. Yeah. What's the reserve? Alvis on manoeuvres. We missed this one when we were walking around before. Triumph Dolomite on Sprint Alley wheels. This is the 1850 HL. Try not to walk in a big puddle. Just discussing these with Harley yesterday. Just saying what a good like a starter classic this would be very usable you could pretty much drive anywhere with it overdrive gearbox but old enough still to be interesting over here next to the grey fergie there's a beautiful little fabric bodied austin 7. so many different variations of these austin 7 some have longer bonnets some shorter bonnets 
some of the door the rear edge of the door is vertical some it goes around the rear wheel arch like on this car here so so many different versions i'm guessing this is about 1929 1930 somewhere around about there yeah fabric bodied that's a nice one isn't it it is sweet This old Armstrong Siddeley looks like it means business. <laughs> so what's all this? So what's all this in the back here? Rickety monkey grill. So it's like a mobile beer dispenser. <laughs> Magnificent. <laughs> My kind of car indeed, yeah. I think passenger rides are the order of the day for some of the cars that are mooching around at the moment. You don't see one of these every day either. So what's this, an RX-7, Japanese plates, I'm guessing. <laughs> but over here, the reason for waddling over here is an XJ Coupe. Saw this one driving in before. Yeah, so it's a left-hand drive, presumably imported. Body colour roof as well, these were usually vinyl. With like a bit of a strip along here, you still have like a bit of a chrome strip there. Vinyl above, body colour below, but this one's all over one colour. Yes, yeah, so stainless steel exhaust look pretty purposeful. No, it's not been here very long, has it? It's got the marker lamps on the back wings, just like our MGB had. The XJ6C. So you had the 12C and the 6C. These are the same. Now, those are the same as the early XJ6 Series 1s. Because partway through Series 1 production, they moved the reflector from there to beneath the rear lights but this one has got the earlier unless the American ones were different you know I'm sort of a, that's the caveat it might be different the American ones but yeah one of the best looking cars in the 1970s I think not sure I missed this one before but probably one of the oldest cars here is this Overland look at the lamps on that as well as having the make name on the top of the lamp look at the lenses Proper brass era car. Obviously wooden spoked wheels, brakes on the back. Similar to the arrangement we had on the Dodge, no brakes on the front, correct? Got an E9 BMW Coupe here, 3 litre, this is a CSI, so fuel injected 3 litre, the L was the lightweight car, designed mainly with racing in mind, with much lighter, thinner body panels. And this is the CSI. Oh, what a stunning car that is. I still can't decide whether these or the XJ Coupe are the best looking cars of the 1970s, but... Uh, the, the correct answer obviously is to have one of each, but these. I just think I lovely. Alpina alley wheels on this one. Nissan S Cargo. I remember seeing this at the NEC, I think. And over here, 900 turbo, five door turbo, eight valve at this point in time. The speed of this cargo goes at 160. <laughs> 
These are real quality, well thought out cars. Super wrap round windscreens on these as well. Like I was saying earlier on, the, the earlier 900s have the flatter front and then they went to like a bit of more of a slopey front, but this is a flat front car. A red, so about 82 or 83, somewhere like that. Yeah, I like that. Nerdy fact, the very early 900s had a set of grills over there, there, and a set of grills here as well. So if you see a very early 900, like a turbo or 900i, whatever, they should have the two sets of grills on the bonnet, whereas these, by this time, they just had the one set. Int int yeah, no worries. <laughs> it's getting jolly windy now. With a movement going on behind, but we've got an Armstrong Sidley Saloon. And again, with these beautifully stylized door handles. It's funny how the glass has gone a bit yellowy. Hmm? Yeah, tiny gauges aren't they? I don't know if you can actually pick this up on the camera, but the gauges are really, really small. Surprisingly small. What have we got here? Lotus Elite. Oof. Very, very yellow inside. But um, Got a 69 Camaro SS here, bit of muscle car, American muscle. No, he's nearly finished. No, no. Two or five on manoeuvres. <laughs> I'm not quite sure what this is, it's a bit modern for me. What's that, a Pontiac something? A Pontiac Solstice. That's a new one on me. It's not a bad looking car, really. Love it. Yeah. A couple of classic Italians, well, maybe classic one day. The one behind it, the GTV. Renault 5 Turbo 2. This one of the Tolman modified updated 205 GTIs. Another Turbo 2, or is this just a Turbo? And the Turbo 2 came along a little bit later. We've got an RS Capri racer. One of the modern Alpines. I'm just gravitating back towards the woodies and estate cars because I want to photograph some of these before they disappear. One or two of the cars are starting to leave now because it's really just a sort of a, a lengthy morning meet up to about two o'clock or thereabouts. So I'm just going to scoot around and photograph as much as I can before the cars start drifting home. There's that little Morris Miner. Let's see if I can sprint over here and get that pre-war Miner driving past. There we go. Oh, look at this Bristol 400 LHT 716. What year is that? About 1950 or thereabouts. What a stunning car that is. My favourite Bristol of all. Love these little, little marker lights or indicators perched on the roof there. That looks just so original. It looks, look, doesn't look messed with at all. The early Range Rover here. I remember a neighbour of ours had one in exactly the same colour, brand new in the 1970s. His was on a K registration, I think. So a year later than this one. Look at that. I wonder when they deleted the starter handle hole. Somehow we managed to miss this area before. Got a nice early preserved discovery. 
E13 of Aston MG BGT. But look at this. One of Vettori's finest. Look at the lamps on the scuttle. How crazy are those? Interesting a screen arrangement as well. I need my eyesight testing, it's not an MGB GT, it's the MGC GT. Like three litre straight six engine. Of course, if I'd seen it from the front, I would have seen the big power bulge, which is the giveaway. Hmm. Nice Alpha Estate. And next to that, an XJSC. This is the earlier Cabriolet version of the XJS, before they introduced the full Cabriolet. They did the SC with a bit of a roof bar arrangement, a bit like the Stag. The glorious Elvis. I don't think this is the one we saw before. Anyway, even if it is, I'm sure I would have remembered that registration number. But yeah, the car is anything but. Proper, proper car. Nothing much here. Oh, let's go and have a look over yonder. I seem to miss those out before. I can see a Lee Francis, a vintage Lee Francis. Let's go and have a closer look. Hmm. I like that. Neat, isn't it? Quite short as well, isn't it? I've seen the Lancia. Lancia Lambda. That's to the Mustang, the notchback Mustang, the Lancia Lambda. I think these have, they, wow. these have got like a really big four-cylinder in them and they're really to look at. Mm. I think they do go quite well. Ford on the move. Yeah, Lambda. There's a really nice 1965 long wheelbase Land Rover. Almost losing my voice, too much talking. Yeah. Very working example. What does it say on here? Something police. BSA police. Not sure if the camera will pick that up. Ooh, Bugatti on the way. revisiting the motor shed I didn't even see this little green single seater here there's a lot of people in here before people are starting to go now so we're able to have a bit of a proper look and there appears to be two of those Renault NNs the vintage Renault NNs this is a cool shed it is yeah, it's called the motor shed and this is a Kleino a vintage Kleino in here an MG now here we've got a 1919 Indian. But not just any Indian, this is the 1919 Daytona Indian Land Speed Record bike. First set in the motorcycle Land Speed Record, 14th of April 1920, at 103.56 miles an hour on Daytona Beach, Florida. Wow. That's a very historic motorbike. 
What an incredible thing to ride. That must have been 103 miles an hour across Daytona. Crouched down over the front forks there. Under bonnet view now of an MGC Roadster, there's that big 3 litre straight 6, twin SU carburettors, shoehorned in, there was a lot of work that had to be done in order to fit that big heavy engine into the front of these, all the suspension had to be redone completely. And here we have a, the remains of a vintage Austin. I wonder what the future holds for this. I assume it's going to be built up into a special or some car of that ilk. I don't know, probably a 12, isn't it? Austin 12, I would have thought. Heritage Engineering Technician Apprenticeships. Uh, there you go. Take up a career in vintage and classic car restoration. And, uh, going forward, we're going to need plenty of those people. Morris 8 Series E, a two door car. This Series E's got the later sealed beam headlight conversion. Originally, these had like slopey lamps, not dissimilar to the V8 Ford that we saw earlier on. Very slopey teardrop sort of lamp lenses on there. Um, but to improve the lighting, you could get a conversion to convert to these 7 inch Lucas headlamps, and they fitted in these pods that attached to the original wing. So that's the original Morris wing. This is the aftermarket conversion piece with the Lucas 7 inch headlight in it. Many, many Series E's have been converted like that. So presumably this is a car that's destined to be restored here as part of this uh, apprentice training scheme. Steel sunroof. It's a two-door car, most of them seem to be four doors. So the two doors are probably quite a bit rarer. Apparently Barry Sheen, the motorcycle racer, originally used this little Suzuki. I'm not quite sure what the story is with it. <coughs> We've seen many Fraser Nashes like this at various sort of hill climb events with the SCC, Lowton Park and Prescott in particular. Now these are always a joy to watch being given a bit of welly. And here is a car called Japic. Now this is a recreation of a car built way, way back in the mists of time. There you go. 1925, the original car. 350cc Jap race engine and 1925 Sturmy Archer gearbox. Appears to be a Capri moving here. I can feel the ground vibrating.
people are starting to go home now so we'll just have a quick scoot around see what's still here and then think about ambling ourselves spotted this interesting speedster quite close to the Bista heritage uh, control tower there As you can see the Ford parking area for the older cars and members of the public is looking a bit bare now. Most people have started disappearing. We've got a gorgeous Jensen 541R here demonstrating its opening air vent there. So you can close that off if you want to increase the temperature of the engine. And as you get up to temperature, you can open it up. Beautiful cars. Really, really smart looking machine. A proper GT, British GT. Gorgeous car that is. Alongside that, one of the mini base Riley Elfs. This is a later car with the wind up windows. The early ones had the slidey windows of the Mark 1 and the Mark 2 minis. Got a Mercedes Coupe here. We're on the main airfield now. The runway, as such as it is, it was somewhere over there, I think. Yeah, just a few stragglers left. So I think we'll probably start wrapping up this video here at Bista Heritage and the Bista Scramble for January 2023. It's nice to get out and about at the shows and not been to a show for a few months. We went to a New Year's Day meeting the other day. There's an E28 being driven around here. But yeah, we've not been to a show for a little while, so it's good to get back into the groove of walking around these shows and having a look, hunting down the interesting vehicles that are here, including this lovely MGC GT. Anyway, Thanks very much for watching, I hope that was of interest. Plenty going on, lots of modern and not so modern cars here, which we of course approve of. And there'll be more videos along, hello there. There'll be more videos on the old classic car channel and no doubt car traction if Juni has anything to do with it before too long. So please keep watching, subscribing, liking, commenting and all that kind of thing. And we'll see you soon, bye bye.